Okay, I'm using two telescopes, refractive telescopes. One of them is a classic Japanese, which is uh, famous for being an excellent um, model T705, I think it is. Yeah, HOC F13. And this is a Chinese telescope, uh, Evo Star, Sky Watcher Evo Star. And 90 millimeter, so that is three three inch, and this one is uh, yeah three and a half inch. The difference between them is that I tested with the uh, first with the finder scope. In the finder scope, I could see chromatic aberration badly in this one, no matter what I did. In this one, even with the widest possible eyepiece, 26 mm image, you could clearly see the two equatorial bands of Jupiter. Then I put this uh, Star Guide 12 mm ED on this one. I could barely see after a lot of you know fidgeting and uh, thing. Barely could see two equatorial belts. The contrast was not good. The lens of this, of course, is not black and the edge of it may be one of the reasons. Another thing is that uh, I removed the eye lens, of the objective lens of this, and actually cleaned it. It was uh, dirty. So maybe I didn't put the spaces correctly. That's another possible uh, scenario. Or is it just like that? With this one, 12 millimeter star guide, pure image quality. 12 millimeter star guide, amazing black velvety background the sky. The Jupiter belt, you can see two easy cultural belts. Uh, the satellites, Galilean satellites, the moons of Jupiter, turn into disks, tiny disks. And then you can see beside the two equatorial belts, you can see more details gradually in the um, Jupiter. So, this is a Chinese technology. And this is Japanese technology of uh, around 50 years ago. This is 10 years ago, Chinese technology. I, I must say that the China has taken over in optics from Japan in that sense, if it is in these two samples. Uh, Japanese maybe are now doing high-end uh, Takahashi expensive stuff because they have a very old population. They have to, you know, pay a heavy price for all this, you know. Uh, maintaining and keeping up the elderly so the products are very expensive the Chinese are a young nation a new superpower the economic giant and they are really going in leaps and bounds I remember in 1980s night early 1980s 1979 China were buying I mean the libraries of them were buying all the American Journal of Science 19th century 18th century stuff up to the 20th century just loading up their libraries with the books and now you see after 30 years 32 years you see the result of it china is a superpower it has taken over everything on this telescope you see including the mount is made in china i don't know look at whatever you have in your hand maybe it's made in china this camera is made in china the one that I'm filming. So, optical technology of China has came really far, and uh, Evo Star 90 is a good example of it. This is a legendary thing of Japanese 50 years ago. I don't see the merits of it. It's just like a spot in a scope full of chromatic aberration. Maybe I have to change, uh, you know, look carefully better, but that's so far it seems like that. Okay, I'm using the Saga, the 8mm, the image quality, not much, it's just you see the same image, uh, slightly less chromatic aberration now that I've used to it, but yet you see chromatic aber aberration, and you see also light scatter, halo around a bright object like Jupiter. I can see is the color is a bit more neutral than what I could see through the um, Evo Star. But generally, details are not as much, the contrast is not as much.
No, I'm using BST ASTAR guide the 8mm and the EVO STAR 90 image quality is stunning. Two main equator belts, I can see some blue coloring wisping. You can see this a uh, lot of details, you know, you can see in this, even though it is just 8mm. Uh, this, in my opinion, the image quality is better than that with this eyepieces I'm using with my eye in this weather condition so in this thing and everything that uh, is just rolling up and uh, yeah this is this is a really lovely telescope wow this is unbelievable this is a Prince Optic model uh, 606, 660 and the aperture is uh, 76.2 focal length 1250 image is color free no chromatic aberration the details are amazing oh my god can I believe that <laughs> that's that's the one <laughs> that's the one this is the legend this is the best <laughs> I'm using the 8mm star guard there. Oh, my jaw has dropped. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Jaw dropping image. <laughs> I could see with the 26mm uh, Celestron uh, Plus hole, lots of details on the Jupiter. And when I changed to this, the image popped. It looked like you're looking with the Nirvana 4mm on the EVO star but much more clear without chromatic aberration or anything, you know, just big, big, the size of a <laughs> big image. <laughs> I cannot believe this. This is the one. This is the telescope. <laughs> it's F17. No false color. Let me just go for five minutes just to see what we have to happen. SLV, Vixen SLV. Okay, I'm now using Wix NSL 5 The image is a little bit just uh, magnified to that. It's nice, it's not bad, don't take me wrong. But you don't see any more detail than what you could see. Uh, it's like, a, I mentioned that previously, that uh, 12 mm was like a 4 mm newborn. Actually, that was like 7 mm newborn. And this one looks like a 4 mm newborn on the Evo Star. I'm now using Vixen SLV 6mm. There is a 6 return. Yeah, 6. And the image is the lowest you can see actually is any good details on it. I think the 8mm or 7mm probably is the optimal. Let me use the Takashi 7, 7.5 LE on this. Okay, Takashi LE um, 7.5mm uh, I wonder if I prefer this over the 8mm or 8mm star guide over this Let me just immediately change to that Okay, Takashi LE 7.5mm gives a paler image white This one gives a little bit yellower The image is slightly yellow and the contrast is better it seems to me all the images are slightly smaller but the contrast in this one I will just change it immediately to the Takashi LE back just to see how it is okay now I'm looking back there with the Takashi again and this uh, vintage telescope F focal ratio of 17 F, F ratio uh, what I can say is that this image is contrasted a tad better than the a tiny epsilon better than the um, star guide of course this comes at a price this is uh, almost four or five times the price of the <laughs> Takashi or three times three to four times yeah that's more realistic um, Star Guider is good. I prefer that one, but this is a little bit wider and um, you know image you can say that you can see a little bit more detail 
slightly, not much, it's not big difference. I can live with both of them, they're good. Either of them also is good. Now my judgment about this uh, telescope. If you want to have a cheap telescope with apochromatic uh, qualities, uh, a classic telescope, vintage telescope, will deliver that for you. Six or seven, uh, six uh, centimeter or seven centimeter, or uh, two inch, two and a half inch to three inch, will be good for you if you want to observe things like stars, uh, double stars, or planets or moon. That's perfect for you. You will have a cheap telescope with the qualities of a, a you know, apochromatic uh, telescope, which may cost you. 10 20 times more so if you see something like this this is good uh, the coating probably doesn't exist at all at this uh, and the uh, dew shield is not very extended uh, I mean the coating technology was not that much developed this coating technology comes since the uh, Soviet bloc collapsed and all the technology of them from the East Germany and Russia was transferred to the West and we have now all this coating since the 1980s. Wonderful things that they discovered and uh, now we use them in our products. Um, so, if you want an apochromatic quality in a cheap package, this kind of telescopes, vintage telescopes, including this one, are excellent for that. And also the light, they are small, relatively, this is long of course. Uh, for observing Jupiter, they're perfect, and Saturn, of course. And uh, yeah, eight millimeter star guider will, will take you anywhere you want, and it's really nice for planetary observation and moon. The Takahashi, of course, you have to have, you can afford it, that's, that's good also. Practically, this telescope is uh, has a quality of a of a chromatic telescope is a chromat is like uh, probably we call, if you call it a uh, Fraunhofer telescope uh, a chromat with uh, color free aberration free qualities oh it's ridiculously beautiful <laughs> image in this with this Takashi or with this Takashi this telescope is amazing <laughs> it's such a tiny three inch <laughs> And it gives all that. <laughs> okay, I immediately removed the Takashi LE from the this Prince Optics uh, 660 to this Avostar 90, and the image quality is a little bit. Uh, uh, yeah, the image is a little bit smaller. Of course, magnification is smaller because it has a lower f number. At the same time, the details I can see are equal. On this one, Takashi gives a slightly yellower image. And uh, with this, there was no chromatic aberration visible at all. With this, I'm not sure I see any chromatic aberration. Probably I see it, but I, I don't. I cannot recognize it. Um, no, details contrast. Everything uh, is equal, and uh, this one, of course, has a much scatter because there is no coating on optics. This one, optics of this telescope are coated, so it's modern. Uh, if I was going to buy, of course, this one would cost me all my, If I was uh, finding something like this about it, I think 75 or so that's something 210 or something like that. If you buy it new. I didn't buy that price, I bought second hand. Same price as this, probably 50 pounds, I think I bought this second hand with all the mounts and everything. Uh, so, yeah. This one gives you a chromatic quality. This one is a little bit color, but uh, the image is as contrasty or even more contrasty than this. So, which one I will get? You will not get this one, it's very difficult to find it. This one is widely available. I will go for this. This one is exotic. And another point is that with the Evo Star, I don't see any um, halo ghost images or anything. 
With this I see halo around the brown bright objects, although when you get uh, your eye get used to it you will not notice it. But with this right away, zap. No halo, no ghosting, nothing. Black, dark background, beautiful disc of the Jupiter. Amazing. After I packed up and came indoors and I was thinking about what I saw with this uh, Prince Optic uh, 660 as the, um, the best thing I can compare it is with the uh, Skywatcher Maxatov 150p, uh, six-inch Maxatov. That reminds me of that.